Hey people, we are back and today we are drawing a Kasune. So we're drawing this fox image right here. This exact image is what you're going to end up drawing. Every little detail, this is what it's going to be. So here we go people. We're going to start off with a nice big oval. It's going to be the basis for the whole heads. You know, it's just going to be like a basic shape just to work off. And through this we're going to draw a line that's going to cut through the circle on this side. Where this line cuts through is basically where his nose is going to start. So we're going to draw these two box shapes around it, like so. It's going to be his snout and the lower part of his jaw. You want to make sure the mouth comes quite far back. You know, in Japanese sort of style and oriental style, it comes quite far back. Triangle for nose, a little oval for the eye, just on that line. Do a curved line come across and do a curved line coming off of that and bring that line back to the lower part of the eye. Create a little curve just underneath the eye and a little loop underneath it. A little curve just off the inside of the eye to create an inner eye detail. Across the snout, you want to make two curved backs and then curve, flick back onto the onto the oval shape and just start curving backwards. Now you're going to create a sort of tip of his nose here, so you're going to create this sort of circle shape coming around. It's where his whisker is going to be coming off of. And this is going back towards the back of his mouth, so the furthest point back. So you're going to create a few loops, come back, and one tooth right at the back of the mouth. We're going to create a little bit of lip now. This is going to curve right across the bottom, just to create that bit of lip. On top of that we're going to add some teeth. So you're going to create some fangs, some sharp ones, and a few little small ones just on the front teeth as well. Pretty much identical on the other side, just up the other way. So two fangs, a bunch of sharp teeth, and a couple little ones just the inside. The tongue is going to be this wiggly line that's going to fit inside the mouth, just curving backwards. On top we're going to have a skull, a skull's going to be on top of his head, it's a clap part of the old legend. And you're going to use ear there, so his ear is basically two triangles connecting. I've done two curved lines just through that circle, just kind of give an idea of where I'm going to position everything inside that skull. So you're going to do two curved lines just off the bottom of that. It's going to push down towards where his teeth are. Because this skull is not going to have a lower jaw. It's just going to be the teeth. So you see I've got the circle around for the eye. And this triangular box shape to make his nose. A bunch of circle shapes to create the teeth now. And a little curved line just above the eyebrow to create a little dip. Curving around like so. Now the skull is going to be held in place by some rope. So you're going to have these two curved lines come around to his bottom jaw. To create the rope as if it's wrapping around. Create a curved line around now, just to kind of show where the jawline goes backwards. So just got a little bit of detail, we're going to add some fur texture. And then add a second one going up towards the ear. It just branches his face back and just makes his face a little bit fuller. Got some whiskers here, so just some flick lines coming off that part of the face. And a few little circles just going towards the tip of the nose. I love these animals, they're so cool. So as you can see, I've just added a little bit of fur texture going around that line. So just basically create thick lines just coming all the way around it and then that secondary line we've done towards the ear, same thing there, just these flick lines in the same direction just curving all around towards the edge. Just create little two loops here and a little circle, just create a bottom part of that rope around the neck. And just here I'm going to do two ends of it coming off, so I'm going to create these two lines curving off and then kind of curving back the other way, going off to a point. So it just creates like the end of the rope in a nice fun way. Rather than just making it a big straight line, I've kind of bent it up, twisted it, make it a bit more fun. The tip's going to be two lines curved into three curved shapes, like so. It's a very traditional way of doing it. Same concept on the other side now. So it's going to create a bit of rope coming out, going towards the end, like so, and just create a little loop at the end. So it's really starting to come together now. So I'm going to add this box. It's going to be the background, so the whole image is going to fit inside this box. It just gives it a really nice finish and cuts all of the uh, excess detail we don't need. So add these lines down the side now. It's going to be like um, a robe fitting around him. You know, because the old foxes were either wise or tricksters, you know, and in quite old-fashioned paintings, you often see them dressed. I'm going to use pour on the other side. It's going to be four oval shapes, a little loop. And just above it, I've got these five lines coming off, and this is going to make the uh, leaf that's going to be in front of him. It's just a bit of background detail. It looks quite nice with it. So you create these curves going around those lines, and you build up this five-pointed uh, leaf. Little line just for top of his head detail, a few little flicks inside the ear as well. Now we're going to go into the line work. So I'm going to build this up section by section, just going over everything we've done, adding a few little details. So like in the nose, add a little bit of a nostril there and a little curved line just towards the top. It's the mouth, I create a little bit of a gum bit at the back as well. So I've got a curved line and the curved line's coming in between. The rope I've got done there, a nice curve. So I basically put diagonal lines through there, done the curved lines and put a very thin line just going through that. Bringing that fur texture now. Start bringing those lines on the skulls. Well, skull, rather, not skulls. A few little crack details on the inside. Bit of the nose. And just work down towards those teeth. Now the teeth, I've sort of added a little bit here, so I made them a little bit longer, so they kind of point out quite high, and then curve down to a flat edge. 
a little bit of rope just underneath the inside where you, whereabouts you'd see it normally. Just going around the rest of the rope now, just like so. And just on the end of that, I'm going to create this little ball section and that's going to go into the uh, end tips. Just go around the outer side lines now for the robes. Put in the claw details. And as so you see on the claws, I've got a little sort of spike point. It's a little line around the outside, just a bit of detail on there. The flower is pretty, well, the leaf is pretty much the exact same as we drew it. And then we have some shading. So I'm going to put a little bit just around the inside the mouth and around the outside part of the eye now. Just underneath that skull and just on the back part of the ear. So from the back of the ear, just fading forwards. So I've got a little highlight on the inside part. A little bit of black now, just on the tongue. Pretty much on the lower part and just where it sits inside the mouth. You know, anything that kind of sits inside, you put a bit of shadow on the outside. A little bit of shadow on the nose, so down from the top line and just a little bit at the top and black in the nostril. A little bit behind the snout. Going to be black in his paw and a little bit in his um, robe as well. Now I'm going to put on the uh, paw, it's going to basically be from behind the claws, uh, down from the top and around the circle but just inside the circle. The claws are just fading up black from the bottom upwards. A little bit inside the skull. The rest of the skull, so a little bit just coming in from the teeth, a little bit around the top, inside the eyes and inside the nose. Some black fading from inside the leaf and a bit of colour in as well. So I'm going to colour in this rope in two different colours. So you're going to have this dark sort of green and this kind of sort of minty kind of like bluish tone. It's a really kind of classic traditional way of colouring it, especially against the orange of the fox. You know, you can do the fox other colours, but the orange brownish tone is the classic. So you see, I just went in a very light faint one first. And they're pretty much going to have the shadow areas all the way down the lines in a slightly darker tone. Like so. And notice I had a bit of background. So around the edge, I've just faded in around the edge. Bit of red in the tongue. A bit of green in the banana leaf. The rest of his fur texture on the lower part, I just put this kind of sort of grayish blue tone. So faded from the bottom bits and around the edges. And it's a little bit going around that back gum area. Now I'm just putting this pattern in the top part of his robe. So you've got this like diagonal line going through the middle and lines just coming off the spikes. And then just mimic those sort of shapes with darker green bluish tone in between it. Leaving little white highlights around the edge. The other part of the robe, we're going to do this nice golden tone. So just bang it all in yellow, a nice caramel tone in between a few little bits and a little highlight on the side. The other bit of robe is just going to be nice reds. And I'll do this swirl pattern inside. A little purple just on the other side and the inside gum piece. Just kind of carry that colour for a little bit. A little bit yellow to come from the teeth. A little bit yellow in the claws. And just putting this nice background in the background. So just put like a nice pale green and then some like darker greens for these swirls. And uh, on the teeth, just a little bit yellow, just fading up from the top, uh, from the tip of the teeth, just downwards. And that's pretty much it, people. That is how to draw a casino fox. I hope you like it. I've got a fox tutorials as well. A few sort of Neo Tread ones that are really cool. Another one's got a bit of a Japanese flair to it. So yeah, check out those ones. Check my videos. I am The Broken Puppet and I shall see you next time. Peace.